So I'm working in the Canvas Free for Teachers. I've got the link down below, or you might be working in your institution's Canvas. Either way, I encourage you to follow along with me because I'm gonna start with this one and I'm gonna click on this class to open it. I've got my navigation tabs over here. We're gonna clean that up a lot so our students only see the stuff that they need to see. Over here on the right-hand side, I've got some really nice tools, especially for building my very first class. And I'm here in the default view. Actually, it's probably more like this one. So this is probably your default view, which would be the modules tab. If you look up above right here at the top, this breadcrumb trail tells us exactly where we are. I'm in my practice class and I am in the modules tab. So we're gonna be adding some things to this, but before we do that, I wanna do just one really quick general edition so that you've got your picture in your profile avatar. And to do that, we're gonna click on account. Over here on the very left, these are our universal navigation tools that navigate us through things that serve everything we've got on Canvas, not just our particular course. I'm gonna click on account. I already have a photo here, but I'm gonna go ahead and update a photo with you by clicking on profile. And to update that photo, you just hover until you get that pencil. You can also click the edit profile button over here. I'm just gonna click on the pencil and I want to upload a picture and I'm going to choose one from my computer. I've got one right here. I'm going to click on open and that looks great. And then I hit save. So I've got a photo there. You might also want to change your name or how you're addressed. This is exactly what your students will see when they bring up any communication from you. Okay, so edit profile. You can change your name here. Maybe I want to go by Angie Redman instead. I also have my pronouns chosen. I believe that none is the default, but you can choose those here. I leave the rest of it blank. I'm gonna just scroll down and click on save profile. Let's get back to the class. To do that, I go to dashboard and then I click on that practice course to open it. Now, the very first thing that I wanna do is to do some settings for the course. And you'll notice that settings, and it might not show up depending on how big your viewing screen is, you might need to scroll all the way down to get to settings here at the very bottom. I'm gonna go through the overall settings, just kinda quickly doing what is only the most important. And then we're gonna clean up all of these navigation tabs for our students. Now I really like including a, a course image and I just go and grab one off of the internet. I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to do a quick search here. This is a math class. So I'm just going to type in math and then go to images. I can click on this one. And then what I want to do from here is to just right click and then do save image as, and make sure it is a JPEG image that works great. And I'm just gonna hit save. Okay, so I've got my image saved. If I go back to my class, I can choose that image now. So I'm gonna upload this image. Notice how it dropped right into downloads. It's really good to remember where it ended up. And then I'm gonna click open. Okay, so now I've got a really nice image there for my students you may or may not be able to change the name of your class. In my institution, a lot of these things are already set up for me and there's nothing that I can do to change them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to scroll down. I am not in the mountain time zone. I'm actually in the Pacific time zone. So I will change that one while I'm here. I'm not gonna worry about a start or an end date. Those are normally set up by your institution. And I don't like to click this next box, restrict students from viewing the course. They're not gonna be able to view it until I hit the publish button anyway. And I do want them to view it as soon as I click publish. But I do keep this one checked. Again, you might not have this option. I don't want them to see it at the end of the term because otherwise they're gonna end up with a whole bunch of different courses on that dashboard. Continuing down, the account default time, this would be the ending time for due dates is set to 11.59. Language, I mean, a lot of the stuff I just skip right by or don't even have any access to. 
But as you continue to go down here, you do have some options here at the bottom. So lots of different options here. Um, you probably don't have these first few options. So I'm just gonna skip those. And then these are really the things that you're allowing students to do within different places in Canvas in your course. I do like to let students attach files to their discussions. I maybe don't want them to create or don't need them to create discussion topics. So I'm gonna uncheck this one. And I do let my students edit or delete their own replies. And let's see, organize their own groups. I'm going to uncheck that one. You can always go back and check these, by the way. Um, hide totals from students in the grade summary. I don't want to do that for sure. And I do like to disable comments in the announcements. Um, and then I'm going to update course details. Next, it is super important to clean up your navigation options that you leave visible for your students. I can't tell you how many other faculties Canvas courses I've seen with all of the options there for the students on the left hand side and it's really overwhelming. I'm going to keep it super bare bones. You can always add things back in. One quick little comment. See how I've got this eyeball here with a slash through it? It means that it's going to be visible to students once I publish something inside there. So anything that I've got up here under the drag and drop items, all of these will be visible to students as long as there's something there. And everything down below are never visible to students. Um, I'm just going to go through and dump a bunch of stuff in here. I don't want people and this is um, that students can see the roster. You can leave it there if you want. I don't use files. I don't put outcomes there. I don't use this syllabus tool of canvases. I put in my own syllabus. So I'm going to drop that one back in there. The pages, I organize my pages, my discussions, my assignments, my quizzes. I organize those in the modules. Think of those as your folders. So I'm going to dump these also into the hidden um, things and then quizzes too. So this leaves me with just grades, announcements, modules, and home. You can change the order by just clicking, holding, and moving them around. So whatever you think works best. I can hit save now. Don't forget to hit save. If you change your mind, no big deal. You can always go back and hide or unhide something at a later date. Um, let's update course details. I'll click it one more time just to be sure. Okay, we are ready to start building course material and we're gonna do that in modules. Now modules is the landing page. That's the page that opens up when a student or you clicks on the class from that dashboard. Now I really like to have a welcome page instead of landing here, but we can save that for another tutorial. I'll put the link down in the description. We wanna start by building some modules. Think of these as folders and we want to build a couple of folders here. To do that we're going to go over to the upper right hand corner and click on add module. It's going to ask you what you want that module name to be and I'm going to call this one getting started and you can see that I've used that before. This is my getting started module. There's also an option to lock this until a particular date. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave that unclicked and click on add module. Now I can add as many modules as I want. I'm gonna add just two modules here just to get us started. I'm gonna add a second module and I'm gonna call that module week one. Okay, week one, add module. Now these modules are folders that contain the things that you want your students to work through. And to add those things, you're gonna click on the plus sign over here. Now there's something else I wanna show you up on the heading bar for the module, and that's this button. This little circle right here is super important because if it looks grayed out like it is here, it means that your students won't be able to see it. They won't be able to view it. But if you've got it published, so it's checked and green, that means that students will be able to see it. So really keep that in mind. And that will be the same for things that we add in here as well. Um, I also want to point out these three little dots. If you click on the three little dots, it gives you lots of options to do once you've got some things in your module. 
but I want to add an item. I'm going to click on that plus button to add an item. And the very first thing that I want to add is my syllabus. I'm going to do it as a file first. So I'm going to click on this add down menu and I want to click on, I want to add it as a file. So I'm going to click on file. Now it brings up any files that you might already have, but we're going to click on create file because this is a new one. I'm going to choose this file. I've already saved my syllabus as a PDF on my computer. So I'm going to go choose file and here it is syllabus and then open and course files. I'm going to not indent it. I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I can click on add item and it gives me this is the heading, which I don't think is super helpful. So I'm going to click the three dots. I'm going to click on edit. And instead of calling it all of this, I'm going to call this course syllabus read me. Okay. Um, update. Adding it as a PDF is a great way to go, but my favorite way to add a syllabus is by using a link to a Google Doc. So I've got my syllabus all built here in Google. I'm gonna go over here to my share tab and I want anyone with the link. So you can click on that to change it, to be able to view it. And then I can copy my link. Okay, so done. I'm gonna go back to my class and let's click on that plus button again. So I click on plus. This time I want to add an external URL so it can take my students right to my syllabus. My URL, I'm just going to do control V, V as in Victor to paste this, or it might be command V if you're on a Mac. So control V and my page name is going to be um, syllabus read me load in a new tab you can just load it right there in canvas if you want to and i'm going to say not indent and then add item okay notice how it showed up not in green i'm going to publish that one because i'm going to make sure students can see it and when i click on it it's going to open the syllabus the thing that i love about having this in google docs is it allows me to post it and then make any edits on the fly i always find something that i did wrong like having the wrong year or something because I'm recycling my syllabi. So a really, really great way to do that. Um, let's take a look. Where am I in my breadcrumb trail? Practice modules, getting started module. I'm going to click back to that getting started module. So we've got that same view that we had before. I'm just going to click on unpublish. So I'll click on unpublish, unpublish, and then update. The other thing that you could do if you decided that you wanted the link instead, click on those three dots and then click on remove and then OK. OK, so I've got the syllabus there. One thing down, a lot of things to go, but we're getting there. The next thing that we're going to add is a welcome page. So we've got a link. We're able to add a file. Next, let's add a page. I'm going to click the plus sign again, and you're probably getting the hang of this now. Down arrow. This time I'm going to choose page and then create page. And I'm going to put, I'm actually going to do a welcome video here. So welcome video, add item. So I've created my welcome page, but notice that when I go through that process, it doesn't actually create the content. So I'm going to click on the page name to open it. And then I'm going to click on edit up here. Now there's a few items in canvas. They just did an update about a month ago um, where you click the three dots. So if you don't see the edit button, look for the three dots. The edit button is here. So we're going to click on edit. And this is a rich content editor, which means you've got tons of options. I want to put, um, Now, instead of going to another program and recording a video, I can actually do it right here, which is one of the super powerful things about Canvas. And I can do that by going insert, and then I want to insert media, and I want to upload or record media. Let's go ahead and click on this. I'm going to record, 
and it says, let's see, mic, I need to choose my mic, which it looks like it's working, but I need to choose my webcam. So I'm gonna choose my webcam. I know that that one is blocked, so I'm gonna choose this one right here, and there I am. And then I can go ahead and start recording here. So I'm gonna click on start recording. It'll count me down. And then I can give my welcome spiel to my class, let them know what class starts, maybe tell them what the requirements are. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna click on finish. I do need to scroll down here. You can start over or save your media. I'm gonna save my media. Now it's gonna take a little bit for Canvas to process it. It was a pretty quick video, but it will take a little bit for Canvas to process it. So while it's doing that, let me show you a few more things. Notice that my cursor is right next to the video. So it's on the line of that video. Wouldn't it be great if this was centered? Oh, it's almost there, perfect. I'm gonna center this one and notice the centering option isn't here. It might be for you, but it's not for me. So I'm gonna click on the three dots. There it is. I'm gonna click my down arrow and then I'm gonna center. So I've centered that line. You can um, change the font if it lets me scroll up here. You can change the font, you can put it in bold, you can change the color. I mean, it's a rich content editor, right? So, so many things that you can do. So I've got that page. Let me scroll down a little bit. You have the option to publish it at a particular date, but I'm just gonna leave it. You also have the option of giving it a due date. The nice thing about the due date is it will show up in the student's to-do list. I'm not gonna give this one a due date though, but instead of hitting save, I'm gonna hit save and publish. This is a super great habit to get into. I can't tell you how many times I've saved something thinking my students can see it. So let me click on save and publish. Okay. So um, there's my welcome video. Now back up to my breadcrumb trail. I'm in practice, pages, and welcome video. I really wanna get back to modules. So I'm gonna click on my modules tab over here on the left. So I've got my syllabus, I've got my welcome video. I'd love that welcome video to come first though. So this little array of dots, are there eight there? When you hover over the array of dots, do you see your cursor change? So once your cursor changes to that cross-hatched double arrow, you can click and hold on one of the items and then move it to a different position or you could even move it to a different module. I want that welcome video to go first, so I'm just gonna drop it by letting go there. Okay, I'm gonna check my list. We've got the welcome video, we've got the syllabus. Oh yeah, meet your instructor. So let's put a page here that says meet your instructor. I wanna add something to this module. This is gonna be another page, so I'm gonna do a page. In the next module, we'll do a discussion board and we'll do a short quiz. So we're really getting a lot of stuff done here. Okay, create page. And this page is going to be um, meet your instructor and contact information. Okay, add item. Now remember, it's created the page, but not the content. And notice it's also unpublished right now, which is great because it's empty. I'm gonna click on that new page's name to open it. I'm gonna look for that edit button and then click on the edit button to go ahead and populate this page. Now I would love for this to start with a photo of me. And I'm gonna do that by going over here to my image icon or you can choose it from the files up here, from these drop-down menus, I should say. And you can go insert and then image, upload image. I think it's maybe a little easier just to click that icon. And then I'm gonna do upload image. Now this is gonna get me to my computer. I click on the rocket ship and then it goes right to my downloads. And I'm gonna use that same photo that I used for my avatar uh, and then open. And then we're gonna add alt text. And I really want you to get into the habit of using alt text because not only is it good for students who are using a screen reader, it's also really good for students that don't have a great internet connection. So if it's not loading a photo, it can at least load the description of the photo. So this is gonna be a photo of 
um, Angie in her home office. Looks like my home office right from behind me. And then um, I'm just gonna click submit. I don't worry about this other stuff. Okay, submit. So there's my photo. I can size it. It's gonna show up here pretty large. To size it, I'm gonna click on the photo and I get those four little blue boxes in the corners. Those allow me to size it. So if I hover over, I get this angled, this diagonal double arrow. I can click and hold on that double arrow and then easily resize my image. I'm gonna put my cursor next to my image, so it's just on the edge there, and then hit return once, and I'm ready to put in some information. Now also for a student using a screen reader, it's really, really helpful to use this heading because as it's reading it, it knows that it's got, it's reading a title versus reading content. So I'm gonna use a heading here and I'm going to say, um, um, I'm just gonna say a little bit about me. And then I'm gonna hit enter. Notice how it's changed to paragraph. And this is gonna be my bio stuff dot 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 enter. And then maybe I also wanna put some contact information. A nice way to organize that is to insert a horizontal line. Oh my gosh, there's so many things I wanna teach you, but um, I'm just gonna keep it simple insert a horizontal line. You could also do a table here. You might wanna take a look at my video on using tables. A great way to organize things horizontally, the default, Canvas organizes everything just going straight down. Okay, and then under that horizontal line, let's do another heading. So I'm gonna go heading two again, and this is gonna be contact, or just how about how to contact me. Remember, this is a rich content editor, so you've got lots of options. I'm not seeing all of mine, so I'm gonna click the three dots for more, and I wanna do a bullet list, a bullet list. So just explore that menu, right? So many different things. And then I can put my phone number, I can put my email, you know, all the stuff. Once I've got it how I want it, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm not gonna worry about a publish date. I'm not gonna worry about assign access. Instead, I'm gonna click on save and publish. So there's that page. Okay, I'm at practice pages. Ugh, I wish Canvas left me in modules, but it doesn't. So I'm gonna click on modules to go back and take a look and see what I've got so far. As you're building your class, Every once in a while, just take a second to click on this view as student button. It will give you an idea of how the things that you've set up appear to your students. And it's super easy to do. I'm going to click on view as student. Look at that nice cleaned up navigation tab list. They're not all showing up because I don't have them all populated. And I also have just that getting started module published with these things. You can even click on them to see what they look like for your students. Um, I'm gonna leave student view because we've got some more building to do. Um, let's go back into modules. So back into modules. I wanna do a discussion board with you. I want want to do a really quick quiz for your students with you. And I also want to do some text headings in that week one module. Believe it or not, we are almost through my list of the things that you need to get your class off the ground. So we are doing great. Now I've got the week one module here. I can collapse the getting started module by clicking this down arrow and then open it and then collapse it and open it. Okay, you get the idea. Um, okay, week one is already open. I wanna add, let's do, a, let's do a text header. We haven't done that yet. Drop down menu, I'm gonna do a text header. I organize mine into what's due Monday. I have due dates Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So however your class is laid out. So I'm gonna say due Monday. I don't indent and then add item. And then um, underneath due Monday, let's do an introduce yourself discussion board so that students can share things about themselves. So I'm gonna click on the plus button. I'm gonna click on the add drop down menu and I'm gonna grab discussion. I'm gonna create a topic. My topic is um, how about meet your classmates? 
And I do want to indent this because this is under Monday and then add item. Okay, so I've got due Monday, meet your classmates. Let's add some content to that discussion. And here it is. Okay, so up above here, I've got assigned to, these are the due dates, expand threads, view split screen, sort. This is for the replies that you get underneath. I rarely use any of those, but I do wanna edit this. There's not an edit button. So you're looking for the three dots. So I'm gonna click on the three dots. There is edit. So I'm gonna click on edit. So um, introduce yourself to your classmates. And I like to give them some specific things. Be sure to include the following and then maybe just a couple of bullet points here. Um, and then I also put um, due Monday. Canvas doesn't allow for two due dates, but I'm gonna have a second due date here anyway. And then I'm gonna have reply to a classmate um, due Wednesday. Probably could have worded that better but I didn't, so I'm gonna highlight these. Let's change the color to red. So I'm clicking on the A here, change the color to red, and I'm gonna not highlight, I'm gonna italicize. So I've got the introduce yourself set up here, and there are some options here that you can set up. I do want this to be a graded assignment. I don't like the liking, you could do that if you wanted to. I'm not gonna do group discussions here. I'm gonna add points possible. I'm just gonna type right over this and make this a five points possible. Display, I leave this as points, but you could do this as a percentage or complete, incomplete. I'm gonna do it as points. And then we've got these assignment groups. Now the default is assignments. We're gonna set up a couple of groups here in a minute. Let's leave this one in assignments. It's our only option right now. I guess assignments and imported assignments for me. Okay, we'll leave it there. I'm not gonna do peer review. And then I wanna do a due date for this one. So I'm gonna click on manage due dates and assign to. If you've used Canvas before, this is a change that happened just this summer. I clicked on that manage due dates and assign to, and I've got my due date pop up over here on the right hand side. I wanna assign it to everyone, that's my whole class. And I'm gonna set up a due date, and let's put this due date in September, and I'm gonna make it September, let's say class starts on the third, no, let's say class starts on the ninth. So I'm gonna make it due on the ninth. But remember, I've got an additional due date there. Um, you can also put an until date. So you could do back to September. You could put the 11th here. For my getting started stuff, I actually leave those open. But with other assignments, this until date saves me. And it saves me from students just posting late work, having it trickle in without me having any control over it. So I do like until dates for the most part. I can give a student an extension though, and I can do that by clicking the add button, choosing a student and giving them their own due date. Okay, I'm gonna click that one. That gives me more control. And then I'm gonna click on apply, and then we're doing save and publish. So I'm gonna save and publish. So remember we had the dropdown of the different assignment groups. Let's visit those and let's go ahead and put some assignment groups in. I'm gonna keep again, this super simple. We're not gonna do a full gradebook setup. You can see my video for that, but let's go ahead and put another assignment group in. To do that, we're gonna go to the assignments tab over here on the left. I'm gonna click on assignments. I wanna add another group. And to do that, I'm gonna click on add group. And I want another group that says participation. And I can make this a percentage. I'm gonna do that actually in a second. And I'm gonna add a third group and I'm gonna call this one exams and projects. Yeah, I do have one called that. Okay, save. Now notice as I was setting it up, it had the group weights and I already had the weight set up for this particular one. I can go back and do that either by clicking the three dots here, assignment group weights, or I can do it by clicking the three dots here and doing that individually with edit. So I'm gonna do it here. 
Um, I'll leave assignments as 30% of the grade. You can just type in whatever you want and you can also choose to drop a lowest score automatically. And I'm going to hit save on that one. Let's do the same for participation. I'm going to click the three dots and edit. Let's make participation worth also 30% of their grade. I'm not going to drop a lowest score and then save 30 and 30. I'm at 60. So I'm going to let this last one be worth 40. Okay. So edit and then 40 and then save. The meet your classmates ended up in assignments because we didn't have these set up yet. I really want that one in participation though instead. So I'm gonna grab that array of dots again. I'm gonna click and hold and then drag it down into participation. And you'll learn more in my setting up your grade book video. Let's go back to modules. You guys, we are almost there. We have added modules, we've added files, we've added links, we've added URLs, right? We have added pages, we did a discussion board, we did a page with a video, we are doing so good. Now I wanna add a quiz. Uh, let's do a do Wednesday. For my week one module, I'm gonna click on that plus sign and then I wanna add, let's do another text header. And this header is going to be due Wednesday, maybe due Tuesday, not indented add item. And then I want to add my getting started quiz. So I'm going to click on the plus button this time down arrow. I want a quiz, create quiz. Quiz name is going to be, um, sure. I'll do welcome quiz. You can do getting started quiz. I do want this one to be in assignments, but notice you've got your three categories to choose from now. So it's really great to do that. And then indent one level, add item. Okay, so again, it's created a blank quiz, but of course I want questions in my quiz. Here we go. Now you're getting it down, right? You know that you've got to click on that name and then we can start to populate this. I'm gonna click on there is an edit button here. So I'm gonna click on the edit button and you can change the name if you want. I think my quiz is great. And I'm gonna just say like, be sure that you've read through the syllabus and watch the welcome video before taking this quiz, you have, we'll give them three tries. You have three tries and I won't do a time limit. Um, quiz type, I do want a graded quiz. So that means, you know, you get it right or wrong, graded quiz. I do want this to be in my assignments category and a good habit to get into is dropping it in the right category as you're creating assignments. I don't want to shuffle the answers. I don't want a time limit. I do want to allow multiple attempts. We'll definitely keep their highest score. And I'm going to allow, I said three attempts. I don't want the students to see the correct answers. I just want them to see what's marked right or wrong. So I'm not going to click, let them see the correct answers, but I'm going to have them see what they got wrong after each attempt. Questions one at a time, totally up to you. This is going to be a short quiz. So I'm not going to worry about that. Require an access code. This is great if you're uh, giving the quiz in a proctored environment and it's not you. So instead you make sure that the students all set up to go and they give have an access code. We don't have that. And then manage due date. So I'm going to click on this one. This one is due. We were in September. This one's going to be due on the 11th. And I'm going to give my students an automatic two day grace period until the 13th. Okay. Apply. This is for applying the due dates only. And then I am going to hit save. I'm not ready to publish it though. I need to save the settings for the quiz. Next, I need to do some questions. I'm going to click on edit again. And now I'm going to go to the questions tab that I've got up there on top. We did the details. Questions are next. And I'm going to do just a little variety. We're just going to add a few questions. So new question. Um, for the first one, I want it to be an essay question. So essay question. Essay questions are one that you need to go through and grade. Uh, so how about what are you most 
excited about for this class. Sorry, English teachers, that's probably not the best grammar. Um, I'm gonna just update that question, keep it really simple. Let's add another question. And I'm gonna add this time a multiple choice question. There it is, multiple choice. Um, when are the due dates in this class? My due dates are always Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we'll give them some different options here. And then um, correct answers would be Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Another possible answer, I'm just gonna click down to another possible answer. Um, Sunday popped up, I'm gonna click on Sundays. I wanna do another answer. Notice down here at the bottom, it says add another answer. So I'm gonna add another answer and I'm gonna go Monday through Friday. And I'm gonna go add another possible answer and let's do um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I've got my three answers there and I already have one set as the correct answer, but let's say that I really, for this class, it was Monday through Friday. So I would just hover over Monday through Friday. That green arrow pops up and I can click on the green arrow to designate what the correct answer is. Not too bad, right? Okay, update question. You can easily make some edits to these questions. If I hover on any of the questions, that pencil shows up and I can click on the pencil to make any changes. Uh, that one's good, so I'm just gonna hit update question. Okay, but when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna click on save and publish. Let's take a look and see how this looks in our module. Right now, I'm in my practice class under quizzes, welcome quiz. I want to be in that module. So I'm going to click on module. Hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of how it's laid out. Seriously, it is not intuitive. It was not clearly not designed by a teacher, but we can get there. Okay, the week one module is looking good, but it's not all published. So I'm gonna click on the dot to make it green, publish the module and all items. Now that I've got that published, let's see what this looks like for our students. I'm gonna click on view a student. You can do this as many times as you want as you're building. It's such a great help. I'm gonna click on view a student and I wanna show you what the class looks like, not just modules. If you click on home, it gives you a to-do list. This is exactly what your students see. So it tells them the things that they've got coming. If they go into modules now, it's got the getting started module and the week one module. And I encourage you to practice their assignments. Take the quiz. You can go back in as a teacher and grade it. So I'm not gonna take the quiz. I'm actually gonna just do leave student view here because there's two more really important things that we need to do for our class. I wanna show you the calendar and the calendar is actually for all of your courses, but you can look at it for just this class. I'm gonna go all the way over here to my universal navigation tools and I'm gonna click on calendar. And this is where you can set up things for your student. Now, I don't wanna have all of mine. I just want that practice course selected. So I'm gonna unselect everything else. The practice course starts in September. Take a look, there's meet your classmates, there's the welcome quiz. I can add in a first day of class. I double click on the ninth. You can also go to the like add event here, but I'm a double clicker. You can input the title and you can say um, class starts today, Monday, September 9th. You can say the start time, you can say the location. Then I can go ahead and click on submit. Your students also have access to this calendar. Okay, I think we did all the things and we're finally ready to publish that class. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard so we can open up that class. So back to the dashboard. Look at that nice image we've got for it. I'm gonna click on it. And I'm gonna go over here to course status and I'm gonna click my down arrow and click on publish. I feel like there should be confetti at this point, but there's not. But your class is now published and visible to your students. Oh my gosh, there's so many more things for you to learn. Next up, you might wanna set up a homepage for your class, or you might wanna learn how to create and grade assignments. 
you got this.